Hello, hello again, bosoms. Yes, it is I, once again, the conspicuous moon. And uh, today, I want to address the leak that came out a few days ago um, regarding the internal situation at Blizzard Entertainment and World of Warcraft in general, um, and then sort of go into what Blizzard's future plans might want to be in sort of general direction terms. Um, so let's just get cracking. So first of all, if you weren't aware, there was a leak that came out a few days ago on 4chan, which um, was supposedly from um, a Blizzard employee who was just having a bit of a vent about, you know, the actual atmosphere at Blizzard at the moment and the World of Warcraft team in general. Um, and I don't believe it. I mean, you, this, this, these sort of things are almost impossible to verify. I think the biggest problem I have with this leak is that it would be exactly the sort of thing I would write if I were pretending to be a Blizzard game developer um, on the inside, so to speak. Uh, because a lot of these grievances and a lot of things that they mention are, are just like general player grievances with World of Warcraft in general at the moment. Um, so. I mean, we will skip over a few of these different ones as we go along, but uh, the leak is more here to accompany the argument, as opposed to being the whole thing. So, one of the things they did mention was that, you know, it came out of nowhere, we had no idea that Final Fantasy XIV was just smashing its way past us. Um, now, I, I think they were perfectly well aware, and they even released a survey relatively recently saying, you know, you know, how interested are you in playing Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker? You know, so, you know, they're, they're absolutely aware of it, they just didn't take it seriously as a threat. Because, you know, they figured they've got their player base locked in and, you know, with all the time spent on the characters, they weren't likely to shift. Although it does appear at the moment that that assumption appears to be incorrect. Now, to be perfectly clear, I do not want Blizzard to fail at this. I want them to make a decent game, it's just that something they haven't been capable of for the last two expansions. Um, and you know, I've only really made it a couple of months into both of those expansions before I just called it a day. Um, so there is a certain pattern of mediocrity that is emerging here and they need to make some major changes in order to get me and other players back. But you know, if they actually made a good game, we would definitely come back. We're very interested in Warcraft. We love it, we've enjoyed our adventures there. It's just what you're offering at the moment is just not up to scratch. I've always said that WoW is at its strongest when it takes ideas from other MMOs, adapts them, and makes them better than their rivals. And, you know, when the game was first developed, it was pretty much universally acknowledged that when they were designing it, they would take elements from, you know, older rival MMOs, which were a little harder on the player, such as, say, RuneScape or EverQuest, um, and improved upon those, or, or got rid of the things that made them onerous or slowed people down, you know, like the, the amount of penalties for dying, for example. And this, you know, would make their new MMO more accessible and attractive to people who, you know, would sometimes get frustrated by the, by the other MMO's mechanics. Um, now, ironically, of course, that is happening to them. The thing has turned on its head, um, and I think Final Fantasy A Realm Reborn was, was pretty much developed with the creators playing World of Warcraft at the time to get an idea of how things are supposed to run properly. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure that the Blizzard development team, the World of Warcraft development team, are interested in a resurgence, but, you know, it, they could actually do worse than, than look at the most popular MMOs on the market at the moment. Um, and finding a niche in there that gets players back. Um, you know, taking the the elements that they think they can improve on at their own development uh, studio and, and making them better than their rivals. Because, you know, they're still getting a lot right. I mean, the Sanctum of Domination Raid has been generally well received, um, even if the end cinematic hasn't. The, uh, the actual end cinematic on, on YouTube was delisted because it was just getting ratioed to the floor. Um, but, you know, Tazavesh, you know, it has also been similarly lauded, and, um, you know, one of the problems with Tazavesh at the moment is that, you know, for the whole of Season 2, which is pretty much the patch, um, you know, it's not going to be available to Mythic Plus players, so there's like a heroic version, so you can get slightly higher level gear, and they will change it, you know, they will, you know, probably split it into two, and then make it available for all Mythic Plus, but, um, you know, at, at the moment, it depends how long this patch is, as to, as to how useful Tazavesh is really going to be. And outside of the Raid and Tazavesh, there's, there's not been an awful lot that players have been getting excited about. Um, so, you know, are those two things on their own sufficient to hold subscription numbers until then? 
I'm personally dubious because, you know, once again, as soon as 9.1 dropped, they put another six-month subscription get a free mount offer out there. Um, you know, with a model that they've obviously put a lot of work into. And, uh, you know, so are they working to another, you know, we're not going to see 9.2 for six months? Because if that's a timetable we're working to, then we're not likely to see 9.2 before the new year. And that's not good enough. They're going to have to speed the process up a bit. Now, this leak um, also said that they're pushing hard for 9.2 to get it out as soon as possible so they can move on to the next expansion. Now, this is great news. You know, this is exactly what Blizzard should be doing. They need to speed up the content release schedule because um, at the moment, they are not comparing well to, to their immediate competitors. You know, you have to bear in mind that Elder Scrolls has got another content update coming out in about two and a half months and uh, you know there is the Endwalker release on the 23rd of November so the new expansion for Final Fantasy 14 that's some pretty hefty competition right there and you know I'm not even aware of the other release schedules for other MMOs but you know if it's anything like that Blizzard don't look all that hot they look a little bit sluggish to say the least but there are also other major development problems like you know the team that's actually going to be developing 9.2 um, there was um, a bit in this leak about you know JL and Brack and Ian Hazakostas not being bad or incompetent they're nice guys they just don't fit into the roles that they've got now we don't know what JL and Brack is like in real life um, but it's it's fairly safe to say that you know he really should have a statue immortalizing his you think you do but you don't um, you know in bronze outside Blizzard headquarters because it has just become his legacy that's what he's going to be remembered for that level of tone deafness um so you know if that's the leader it's it's small wonder um, that you know the, the rest of the development team aren't particularly keen on communicating with their player base um and as a result they have no idea what their player base wants as Rian has a coast is it's fairly obvious at this point that he's not the right fit um you know two consecutive mediocre expansions that have been poorly received um, really does see to that Will Blizzard have the fortitude to make some changes at that kind of level? Um, probably not, let's be honest. And that does kind of mean that, you know, you, this team is going to be creating the same things that have been driving their players away. I mean, on the communication front, they have not been communicating properly, and players have been asking for greater communication for some time. Um, the leak, once again, um, mentioned an adversarial approach to players in general, um, as especially Asmongold, but, you know, that is an entirely different story. Um, as well as, you know, whenever they've gone out and done PR, um, you know, they've had a lot of people, um, you know, give criticism, salute and preach, both asked very, very pertinent questions. And, you know, the, in general, the responses were not well received, so they've kind of pulled away from us a bit. But, you know, unfortunately, guys, you know, when your product is having quality issues, then then people are going to ask questions of you. Um, the leak also refers to like an internal idea of like, guys stop engaging on Twitter, um, which, you know, is probably a good idea for some of them, because there have been a couple of very high profile tweets that don't really put the Blizzard development team in a very good light. I mean, now, I'm sure that's your opinion, but, you know, if you're putting out in public with a blue tick next to it, just be a little bit more careful. Um, but they shouldn't withdraw from Twitter altogether because it has been one of their main communication tools for years now. You know, I think all the, the people aren't really asking for all that much. They're just asking for, you know, the development team to engage a little more with the player base and try and explain to them what's going on and what's being planned and how they, you know, sometimes acknowledging that they're not getting it right. I mean, imagine a statement um, on Twitter, you know, 140 characters saying, Covenants haven't really worked out the way we'd like them to, so we're going to make a, a number of changes. Um, these are some of the things we're thinking of implementing. We're going to remove the, the two-week swapping time because, you know, that's a bit cumbersome and doesn't really serve any purpose. And, you know, maybe we'll balance the class abilities a bit better so 91% of a certain class aren't all in one covenant. I mean, if they if they just released that, you would get a lot of fist pumping from the player base and a lot of hooray, they finally listened. So I'm not much of a Twitter expert, but... Um, According to the way I was looking at it, Ian Hazakostas' last tweet was on Valentine's Day, 14th of February, which is over five months ago. So, yeah, you know, that's the, that's the head honcho, and he's just said nothing for over five months. I mean, really. 
So even if they're going to get this patch out quickly, they're still going to need some changes in design philosophy, um, because it's clear that the current ethos is not working out. And, um, you know, I'll give you an example of it. Imagine for a moment that the Pleasure Palace in Final Fantasy XIV, the Gold Saucer, is transplanted into World of Warcraft. Now, uh, the Gold Saucer at the moment is a place for people to try out tons of fun mini-games, you earn a currency, you can go and redeem them for big prizes, and there's a lottery and everything else. It's just there for fun and flavour, there's nothing endgame about it whatsoever. The WoW version, on the other hand, would probably be a daily, um, and you'd have to go in, you'd have to complete 15 activities, and then at the end of the 15 activities you'd go back and you'd get a, a, a new currency, completely new, um, that you would go and redeem and you'd get um, a minute incremental increase in your player power. You know, 0.25% extra crit or something. And, you know, the development team would say, you know, it's optional content, you don't have to do it, but, you know, they know, as the players do, that, uh, you know, no one is, is going to be willing to not do it because they might lose their raid spot to Jimmy, who's been going every day, um, and his crit is now, you know, 1.5% higher. And, you know, if you're really lucky, they'll add a reputation to it as well that's achingly slow to level and can't be ground out at all. And, uh, but it is, in fact, the only way you can fit a socket onto your neck piece at Exalted. Um, naturally, of course, this socketing system would not work in 9.2 because there would be a new reputation to grind for that. So, given the choice between those two, which one sounds more appealing? And, unfortunately, it may be already too late to get fresh feedback because, you know, that feedback has been left for years now. Um, with no indication that any of it is being absorbed by the development team at all. And they had no longer have faith that uh, Blizzard um, can actually turn it around. I believe that they can. I believe that they can turn it around, but they're going to have to make some major fundamental changes. The only way that they're going to reattract their player base back um, is through um, some fundamental changes at the development level. Um, fundamental changes in the actual design level as well. Personnel definitely need to be changed, and there needs to be an acknowledgement that, you know, perhaps things haven't been going as smoothly as they thought. You know, that's that's just to start them off. So there is an awful lot of work to do, but, you know, it doesn't mean that World of Warcraft is going to gurgle noisily down the sink. I mean, it's going to be around for a while, but whether or not it's still relevant is entirely up to Blizzard Entertainment at this point. Um, you know, they do need to get better, they do need to get faster, and they do need to get more creative really, really quickly. Um, and, you know, some of their rivals already have one hell of a head start on them. Anyway, thanks for letting me blather on a bit. Um, as you can see, I'm still playing Final Fantasy XIV. I'm going through the um, story quest line at the moment, because there's something um, that I really should have been doing, but wasn't. Um, so now I'm catching up on it. Um, I will be back relatively soon, but until then, I am the Conspicuous Moo, and a very, very good afternoon to you.